But thanks for listening. Yeah. Greetings and welcome to We Say Things episode 138. My name is Suns Fan and Cinderin is also here looking very dapper. Hello. I really like your five o'clock shadow. I'm sure for you it's like an 84 hour shadow o'clock. No, this takes longer than that. Okay. It does. But thank you. Great. Great to see your face this time of the week, Cinderin. Just truly thank great. You. you too. Thank you. You have a good face. Why don't you take the in Bruges first half this time around? Why are you laughing? Oh, that's an awesome segue. <laughs> well, we have no sponsor. <laughs> we have no that, manscape that this true. week. So. They had enough for now. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's have a look. So, as always, thank you guys for supporting our podcast through Patreon. And here are the in Bruges tier of the week. Purchasing the In Bruges tier and hope you will promote my Steam game for play chess available to wishlist now. I have no shame. Correct. Whoever needs to hear this, you are a good person and doing great Dota is not a loser's hobby. No, it's crack. Vovalicious. Trump DeSantis 2024. Let's go. I can't wait for Microsoft to buy Valve and make Dota great again. Roundy 3. My name is not William. It's Billy Ray Valentine, Mr. Duke. Games for Falling Asleep thinks Dota could have millions of players if it were marketed properly. Uh, properly marketed. Disco Far MD, Vincent Darksey, Hakuna Matata, Commander Dona, Chakar's still an asshole. M Milan, Miami. The Mega Pope. Sorry I made you look up churches. It was a Sydney thing with ScoMo, TI in New Zealand. Zan Xavier and you. Thank you also to the rest of the In Bruges tier, highlighted by the great Nate Thicko 01 Ham Scrotes, Bacon, a Shark TM, Freshly Seasoned Goat Balls, Dop, Nothing to See Here, The One and Only Underscore Man, Can You Pronounce My Belgian Name Correctly, Florian Mathau. Florian Mathieu. That sounded I more tried. French. So it's M-A-T-H-I-E-U, which... In an American accent, I know it would be math though, but it's obviously going to be horribly incorrect. Uh, ben Broomhead is a Melbourne guy. Sydney is a bit cringe, not going to lie. We can all agree. Fuck ScoMo, though. Pitch Black, Wooden Aftertaste, Anonymous. And finally, Peter, Honey's low moisture content keeps bacteria from surviving. And without bacteria at work, Honey just doesn't spoil Meebling. Oh, cool. That's two weeks in a row about Honey. I never thought I'd be interested, but thank you. Can we get one more next week? Yeah. <laughs> I would like to know the average density no, of honey. I, just say bees make honey, and that would have been the good joke, but I guess it's oh, too late. Oh, shit. Uh, okay, let's start this bees off nuts. with something we haven't done in quite a while, Cinder, that I know you're going to be very excited for. It's the NBA. Oh, I love NBA. NBA segment, uh, just to keep people that aren't interested at all, but are somewhat interested in hearing about it. That didn't make any sense, but regardless. The Suns are number one in the league. We have ensured oh, that we, we've won a lot of games. I don't remember what our record is, but we're doing quite well. Uh, NBA standings. Yeah, you can look. Tell us, tell us who's on one, top. Miami Heat. That's, That's Eastern Conference. Western Conference. Wow, you're 44 and 10. That's really fucking good. That's right, Cinderin. Second place is 41 and 14. That's in the West. And in the East, we have like 10 games advantage over anybody in the East. Uh, so Do you yeah. think you're the best team because your logo is literally a basketball? A lot of teams have just a basketball. Miami Heat, Lake, actually, I would say more than half the teams have a basketball on their logo, if not more. Okay, top, top 15 in Western Conference is only you. It depends on I which logo... This is the most uninteresting conversation. Just let me talk and finish this. Now segments. you know what it feels like for me to talk about basketball. Hey, you just shut up. Okay, okay. Um, where was I? So the Suns have so the All Star looks like an onion. The All Star break will be in, I think, in about a week or two, and because the Suns have the best record already at this stage, our coaching staff will be coaching the All Star game for the one of the teams. Uh, Devin Booker and Chris Paul have made the all-star team as well. So that's great. But really 
what I want to talk about are the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Lakers syndrome. This won't make any sense to you, so you can just tune out for a moment. The Brooklyn Nets, Wonderful. the trade deadline is today. I think it's in the next 10 hours. And there's rumors that James Harden is asking to be traded, the beard man, which we've actually talked about many times on this podcast. Uh, and I'm rooting for that team to just be miserably horrible because mostly of Kyrie Irving being an absolute pile of garbage. So glad that there's a lot of drama with him. They've lost like an eight in a row somehow, despite being favorites to win the championship at one point. And then the other side makes me even happier. The Los Angeles Lakers are awful. My God, they are awful. Somehow, Russell Westbrook on the Lakers didn't work out. Color me shocked, even though I said this a million times. I should be a GM in the league because they have done a horrendous job, Cinderin. Russell Westbrook sucks ass at basketball. And with that, we can move on to, uh, to Dota. Does that I recommend good? Lil Dicky's song, uh, Russell Westbrook on a Farm. Okay. That's all I know about Russell Westbrook, but that's a good song. Great to hear. And you're welcome. Let, let's start it off with uh, some roster news, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, the team formerly known as Team Tickles, who of course got second place in the Western EU DPC, have a new organization called Gaiman Gladiators, Cinderin. Yep. Who I was going to check this before the podcast started, but because I don't do any research, mm -hmm. I forgot to. I believe right. have something to do with NFTs, if I'm not mistaken. Please. Yeah. So the org, uh, yeah, the org part of this, if you will, Game and Gladiator is a part of. It's powered by Game and IO, which is uh, sort of. How, what's a, an easy way of explaining this? Like, basically, a supply of GPU processing power for uh, blockchain technology, right? Mm hmm. And then the other one is Stoneforged, which makes uh, custom-made PCs. So it's like, it seems to be some sort of partnership between Gaiman and Stoneforged that then makes this org. And what they have in common is their uh, need and ability to provide uh, processing power for computers in order to do NFT stuff, blockchain, et cetera, et cetera. So that's basically all I, I got about it. I don't know anything about these. I haven't heard it, hadn't heard it before. Uh, I had heard of Team Tickles, though. Great. Well, it's good to see that another team gets picked up by an org. And it's funny because as much as people, again, Cinder and I, I'm going to speak for you here. We don't know much about NFTs. Okay. We're boomers. Okay. We don't care mm -hmm. that much either. <laughs> we I don't, don't think Zoomers know much about NFTs either. Nobody really does. Well, we don't know or care. Uh, it's a powerful combination that usually leads to disaster. But, you know, NFTs are still young, so we'll see what happens. But... Usually, like I know the Dota community specifically are very against NFTs right now. Nobody mm -hmm. seems to care about this because they know that there's betting companies, every, doesn't matter. There's a lot of shady shit in esports and specifically Dota. Just get the players their money. So congratulations to Team Tickles. They get an org behind them. And it's really cool to see a team come out of absolutely nowhere that end up getting sponsored like this. Really the last remaining one is Quincy Crew, who recently yep. signed up for... They're part of an agency now that's going to help them find sponsorships, essentially, from what I read. So hopefully that leads to greener pastures. Uh, okay, so from here, yep. let's go on to the DPC Finals prediction, which when I say DPC Finals, I mean the major replacement. Yes. That's what we're calling them now. So mm -hmm. next week... Uh, or this week, I should say, it's going to be SEA, South America, and uh, Europe, Western Europe specifically. So I thought we could go through each region and make some predictions. And I actually have it's graphics. starting tomorrow, right? That's all of the regions. I said this week, which that's technically correct. I'm just confirming that they all start on the same day. They do. They all start tomorrow. All right. I put up some amazing graphics. For Europe, graphics. they all start tomorrow, at least. This is the kind of production that you guys get to see on We Say Things. Uh, here's the bracket for uh, for the SEA division. So you can see Boom will be playing Team SMG. Fnatic will be playing T1. And all the regions are going to be the same, where it's a four-team double limb bracket. And I think they just take three days from uh, what I remember. So do you have any predictions, Cinderin? 
what are we going to do? Are we going to try to place all four of them in order? Is that what we're going to do? We could do that. Sure. Why not? And actually, we okay. could talk about what their record was. That would mm -hmm. make it a little bit more interesting as well. So let me bring that up on the, another screen that you guys cannot see. So go ahead, Cinderin. Start it. Start us off. Okay. So I think Boom... I mean, Boom overall had the clearly strongest result, right? Um, it is league play, and things get different when you get into this double elim format with uh, best of threes, but I still would probably pick them as my favorite. They were the strongest team in the season. There isn't anything that convinces me to change that opinion. Second place, I will take Fnatic. Third, probably T1, and then fourth, SMG. But T1 is a bit of a wild card with Gabby. It could be really, really strong for them. Um, Gabby playing with Carl and Cuckoo, I think, sounds very, very powerful. But, I mean, they had 23 Savage before, and he was not looking terrible at all. So, I don't know if... Um, sometimes when you swap out a player, you just get this, like, new spark of life in the team that can really give good yeah. results on especially short term but i still think i keep my top three boom fanatic t1 and then smg last it's yeah he's kind of like a wild card i guess we didn't mention that for the roster swap section but uh our segment but gabby will be playing like you said for t1 but, but he's a stand-in stand for it, this tournament it's not an official roster edition i don't think they've officially announced anna have they no but it everybody is no. pretty sure it's anna so we'll see uh, so just to recap for the SCA division, Boom was number one, going six and one, and the only team that they lost to was T1, uh, and then Fnatic, T1, and SMG all tied at five and two. So this is going to be maybe the most contested and less clear, perhaps, mm -hmm. region. Uh, so you picked you picked it in order of yep. one, two, three, four, what they ended up with. So I'm going to switch it up, and I'm going to say. T1 will win because of the wild card factor. Because okay. I, I have, based on traditional sports and other esports, these wild card factors where you bring somebody in, it's either, I find it's like either amazing or terrible, and not much in between. Either they're last place or first. And I'm going to go out on a limb oh, right. and say first place here for them. This was just pointed out in chat. I actually forgot this happened as well. Um, boom. Swapped out their carry too. Oh, did they? They swapped out Tino for Jackie. Oh, so yeah. So they yeah. have kind That's of right. the same thing going. I, I don't know why. Yeah, okay, that one won't but... work out in this uh, scenario that I definitely thought out. Uh, so I'm going to pick T1. Um, They're going to lose to Boom in the upper bracket, but then we'll win out from there. That's the. Okay. So that also means that Boom beats SMG and T1 beats Fnatic in the first round. That's right, Cinderin. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sounds believable. Thank you. All right. Next, let's move on to South America, the region I know least about for sure. And I'm sure that's the same for you. We have Thunder Awaken versus APU King of Kings. That's the one thing about South America. Their names are awesome. And then Infamous and Beast Coast. So if we recap what those standings originally were, bring that up. Thunder Predator was clearly the best at 7-0. and Infamous number two at 5-2. and and then Beast Coast and APU King of Kings tied at four and three. So I'm sure okay. you're going to go with the robot answer that uh, Thunder. No, I'm actually going to make it different here. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to go out on a limb here and make a bold prediction that Beast Coast win, even though they got third. And it's it's because of their ability to perform the best when the stakes are higher, right? They're the team that's had the clearly best international results out of these teams uh they yeah they do best on the big stage really and whenever like you've had seasons where let's say thunder predator for example going into ti they also look great in sa and then internationally they crumbled and i don't think you can blame all of it on inability to play against the other regions i think it's when there's pressure when the pressure is on and you're playing for a lot the players might not be as strong mentally as beast coast are They've just proven that to me time and time again. So yeah. this is the biggest tournament in SA ever in terms of prize money for uh, for a local tournament as it turn as it will be now. Uh, so that hmm. that's got Beast Coast bumped up for me. So I think Beast Coast will win. I'll probably still put Thunder Awaken at second just because you know they were clearly better than the other teams. And then Infamous third, Apu King of Kings fourth, or APU. So. 
I'm not going to lie. God, I'm going to sound like such a goddamn idiot. So Thunder Predator, the Predator mm -hmm. was the sponsorship. That was yeah. a sponsorship I with so. Acer Predator. That ended. So now they're back to their original name, which is Thunder Awaken. I think so. That, no, I'm, I'm telling you, that's what it is. That's, yeah. that's, yeah. I did not know that the Predator was actually a sponsored name. Mm. Uh, otherwise, their name would have been Thunder Awaken Predator. <laughs> Which also sounds hilariously good. Anyway, Awaken Thunder Predator. The roster is obviously completely different than the original Thunder Predator. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I understand. Okay, I'm gonna go with the tried and true. Then I'll say Thunder Awaken will win, and the other two teams not named Beast Coast, Infamous and APU. These are not familiar names, so I'm gonna go with Beast Coast because basically what you said. Uh, we've cast okay. many many of their matches in the past as well, so that'll be the one and the two, I think. Okay. All right. And then infamous over APU or? Sure. 50 50. 50 50. Okay. All right. And then finally, we get to Western Europe, which we know the, well, between that and NA, I suppose we know the most about. Yeah. Uh, this one is going to be quite interesting indeed. So we have Team Liquid versus OG to start things off. And then Gladiators. Is that actually what they're just going to be? I guess so. I thought it was going to be GG, Game and Gladiators. That's kind of disappointing. GG versus OG. <laughs> Gladiators yeah. versus Tundra. And just to remind you what those actual standings were, Team Liquid was by far the best at 6-1. and one. And then there was a massive tie after Team Tickles surprised everybody for second. But the tie was between Tundra, OG, Secret, and Enigma. And Tundra and OG end up taking the last two slots there. But definitely... Not including China, which has very deep region as well. Western EU, from the Western side, just out of any other region, definitely has the deepest uh, teams. Um, yeah, I'm going to go against the regional standings again here. Uh, I'm going to pick Tundra to win. I think in the tiebreaker, they just crushed. And I think they're... If they're on, they're the best team here. That's my opinion. Like when they play their best compared to the best we've seen from any of the others, um, they're just, I just think they're better. So I'm expecting them to show up in good shape. It's not a new patch. Uh, there's like no surprises here, so to speak, in that sense. I think Tundra are very well in tune with the meta and they have pretty wide hero pools. And when it comes to creativity, if they are going to do that, uh, also one of the teams that's most creative that we've seen in recent times in Europe, right? With Nine playing all sorts of wacky stuff mid, 33 setting meta-defining itemizations and certain hero picks in the offlane. So, um, yeah. Tundra first, Liquid second, OG third, Gladiators fourth. And I know Gladiators got second and surprised everyone, but I feel like part of their success in these series... Uh, will be slightly figured out with how they ran like their offensive tri lanes, uh, with how they picked their heroes for salary, etc. So I have the lowest expectations for them. Uh, I'm happy to be surprised, but I do place them last for this against these other three. All right, now I don't know what to say because that was the literal exact order I was going to go with: Tundra, oh, wow. Liquid, OG, Gladiators. So good. Then we can be wrong together, just like in SAP segments. Yeah. See, I feel like it's better to play the odds and just be different, but I actually, I really like Tundra. Like, Liquid looked better overall, but mm -hmm. I don't really have as much faith because they're a newer squad, so to speak, and Tundra, I mean, out of all these teams, Tundra have the most experience with each other, right, by far. Mm -hmm. It's like an entire year's worth of extra experience together. Um, and yeah, they've, they've looked really solid. OG, though, that we didn't really need by the way we both picked the incorrect teams to move on to this stage yeah, that's uh, true. which was secret and nigma right? we picked yeah. both of them over tundra even and og og have surprised again and again and again and it feels like they're just this constant underdog story that maybe they shouldn't be because they seem really good every time they play mhm mm uh, but I'm going to go with my gut, which is the same as yours, sadly. Which is weird because the I'm not gut. intolerant and you're not. So I don't know how that works exactly. Well, this isn't really about milk. It's Dota. So, well, we'll see about that. Okay. 
Uh, let's move milk on. Milk isn't playing anymore. To the next section. You did give Milk a run for his money, by the way, with the one should and nineteen before, punch. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, should mention before we go there that the other three regions obviously will also be playing, which is NA, Eastern Europe, as well as China. But they're playing a week later, so we could be talking about them in the next episode. That's right. We may yeah. or may not. You'll have to stay tuned to the next. That could be the clickbait title for this week. Is we'll there an episode? <laughs> is week. there an episode next week? All right. Next thing on the list is Aghanim's bundle. My goodness, what a surprise! But the battle pass is on sale. I actually bought some level Cinder to get the Drow Arcana, despite never playing Drow. It's weird. Yep. It's. I was talking about this on stream earlier. It's the fear of missing out, FOMO, as it were. Mm-hmm. I, I feel I regret not getting Queen of Pain, despite never playing the hero because it's. If it's not the best Arcana, it's top two or three. It's worse. the worst. So that that made me. Now I can never get it. So that kind of sucks. But so I have the Drow Arcana. Did you do any leveling? You can buy an account that has it. That's true. See, a lot of them are going around these days and not getting banned. So, could just. Uh, sorry, accounts. what did you ask? If I have it, did you buy the battle pass bundle? I bought the bundle. I'm very close to draw now. I think I'll get the rest of the way from playing. Mm. Um, Good. Yeah, and honestly, so I just want to address this a little bit because you know something that the community complains about over and over, based almost no matter what battle pass it is, is the difficulty with obtaining certain things, right? And the perception, at least this time around, seemed to be that you needed to get a level 100 battle pass and then you needed to buy a lot of additional levels and you needed to, you know, this and that in order to get the cool rewards. I think, if I'm not mistaken here, you could get basically every, I'm going to say every good reward up until Drow. Whatever is after that is mostly just recurring things. And then there are some, like, what is it like the oils you put in the river or um specific like pings or whatever like some some smaller things that are uh, that are finite that run out when the battle pass ends but as far as what is maintained what's really good the highest reward is drow at 333 you could get that with a level 100 battle pass and this bundle and nothing else um which i think in total price was correct me if i'm wrong here about $70 Level 100? I thought it was $45. Was it 45 I, And then the, how much was the Battle Pass bundle for you? Uh, ooh, 35 I don't remember, and I bought so that So maybe it's today. 80 Let's say it's $80. Um, it's, it's ballpark 80 So I think for $80, and then if you also, in addition to that, play the game and try to get levels. So you play the Cavern Crawl, you play Aghanim's, uh whatever the fuck it was called, I forgot. Um... If you play all of that, you could reach level 333. So essentially, the Drow Arcana and all prior rewards cost about 80 bucks if you play a lot and do stuff. If you don't play a lot and do stuff, you are going to buy more levels. And that's, I mean, that's probably always going to be a discussion, right? Like how much do things cost? But right. based on the original community response to this, I think people thought this was going to be way harder to get so I don't, I don't know if you feel the same way about this, but I actually think leveling up this battle pass was not that difficult. And the cool rewards weren't in an unobtainable range unless you specifically want to be able to buy a level one battle pass and play your way to the drow. That is not mathematically possible, I think. Um, but in previous battle passes, like the TI battle pass, I think in order to get the really cool arcana there, you needed to buy the battle pass at max level, buy the bundle, buy multiple additional level packs in order to get the higher arcanas. Like, was it Windranger, I think? Was on level 600-something in that one? 400. And there were other ways of leveling, but I don't think it was obtainable in the same way as, as this was. So, I think um, based on the initial reaction, I agree it wasn't mm-hmm. as bad. It wasn't great, mm-hmm. though, I don't think. Uh, right. I think they can do better. I think the thing that... If we look back on the battle pass, and I don't even have, like, I don't have any of the things open. I'm just going off of memory now. I think the most disappointing part was the Marana persona. The fact right. that it isn't a remodel. Like, if you're going to come out with that, then come out with a remodel as well, I think. I think that's very disappointing. There should have been a remodel of the base hero. 
And then just the idea that personas, you, you just all the stuff that you've potentially spent, like time and money, getting sets for Marana, that means this is literally a dead item then. A lot of people aren't even going to yeah. equip it because it just looks like a what the base model should look like potentially. So, um, What was I going to say? So I, I think all, all, honestly in all of this, what is always going to be the primary discussion, or I, I don't even know how much of a discussion it is. I don't know how many people disagree apart from Valve that there shouldn't be these... Uh, exclusive arcanas that are only tied to battle pass that you can't get outside of it do you think how to say do you think it's good for anyone else than valve that it is like this i mean obviously they're putting in like you said fear of missing out like exclusivity you only get it if you reach a certain level within the time frame so that you're more inclined to buy levels or uh buy the bundles etc if if the battle pass had the same rewards as it does right now without the Arcanas, and the Arcanas were sold separately mm -hmm. at a normal price uh, of Arcanas. Was that $40, I think? Um, well, with the math I just did, I mean, obviously Valve have the numbers, right? They probably think it's more profitable like this, and I think it is too. But how much do you think it would matter? I mean, it does add a, a, uh, a layer of rarity that mm -hmm. it's part of the battle pass, meaning you can't buy it because that means some people will not get it that may have wanted to get it. So you're giving up those sales, but in turn, you're making more money probably because it's a battle pass in nature. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, the people that have that go for the, like the big whales, as it were, the, I don't know. It, it's actually a, a give and a take to some degree, but the fact that it's rarer, like the fact that I am going back and thinking about the Quap Arcana now <laughs> and Mm -hmm. I, that's literally the reason that I, I leveled it up to get Drow, despite never playing this fucking hero, you know? But that's the thing, though, right? This means that all future people that would want the Quap Arcana because they think it's really cool and were willing to pay $40 right. will not buy it. Correct. So you're cutting out all of that profit, though. And I don't know so. how much money that is, though. Based on my experience with sets coming out, because I've had a lot of sets in the game, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, Later on, they're like attributed to chess and they're only available for a certain time. But the first few years of getting sets in the game when there's actually some money to be made, it was really the first, like the tapering off process of how many people buy stuff after like the first week, it drops off considerably and it just scales down. So yeah, they would have missed out on some sales, but I don't know if it's really that much, you know? You would assume that they've run the numbers, right? Yeah. That's something Valve are very good at is I mean, data analysis. I don't think... So. like. I criticize Valve a lot. One thing that I know they're good at is analytics. Yeah. And I think they they use it as a crutch sometimes where they rely on it too much. Of course, mm -hmm. could be horribly wrong because I don't know anything about what they look at because <laughs> they're much smarter than me. But yeah, that's one thing that I would definitely not accuse them of is being ignorant to this. Uh, but on top of that, in the Battle Pass post, uh, there was a little blurb at the bottom saying, looking further ahead, gameplay patch 7.31 is slated to arrive on February 23rd. So they give it a specific date. Once the effects of Aghanim's adventures have Woo! been mitigated and the Battle Pass has come <laughs> to an end. So, with that in mind, Sindarin. Two weeks well, left of the Battle Pass. That's right. Would you like to make a 7.31 wish list? Yes. Not I will try... what we expect. It could be both. Mm -hmm. You could make a hybrid. Right. But at the very least, some things that you're wishing for. Right. Okay. I think I have... Okay, three main things, and they're kind of broad. But if I could literally choose, I would... Number one, either remove neutral items or make them way less powerful for the tiers that they're in. You can keep them if you want, but they shouldn't be as good as they are. You can just make all the tiers worse, so they're still there. Um, but don't do as much on all levels, including level one. I, I think it would be nice if they're just weaker. Okay, not happening. Um, Go ahead. And that ties in with my next thing, because I think one of the gripes I have with the development of Dota in the last like few years is I think there's too much power creep. If you're not familiar with that term, it's a term you use for <clears throat> video games in general, where over time things just get stronger than they used to be. So, for example, in competitive card games, the latest selection of cards, the newest edition, 
is just better than the original. So nobody plays the original cards anymore because they're just objectively weaker in all aspects. In Dota, it's not work. It doesn't work in the same way where newer heroes that got released the latest are better than the older heroes, but a newer version of every hero is basically stronger than the older version of that hero two or three years ago. And items in the game and the map and the gold gains and everything. So things have just got a lot faster. They ramp up a lot quicker. Um, heroes are getting five or six slotted 10 minutes earlier than they were four years ago. Uh, and a part of that is a neutral item because you're just giving heroes free stats, free damage, free attack speed, anything that makes them farm, things that make them kill better, um, all of that, without, in my opinion, cutting down enough on what the map is worth. So there's too much gold on the map. If you want people to farm this fast, like in terms of how fast they kill the jungle, it needs to be worth less. Or how fast they kill creep waves, they need to be worth less. Or heroes, all this stuff. So slow the game down. That's my biggest thing. Uh, so neutral items, number one. Second thing, less gold on the map. And I think primarily less gold on the map from creeps. Um, try to find strike a balance where skirmishing is more valuable and it's less about just in these mid-game team fights that teams tend to primarily take. See if you can bring back split pushing a bit more by tweaking the numbers. Um, and then finally, some map changes. We've had the same map for a long time now. Uh, change up the warning spots, change up the pathways, change up the line of sight areas with trees uh, to make it fresh again and new. Those are my big three. The rest is just like individual hero buffs and nerfs, but that could be whatever. It's always the macro things that I'm more nothing, interested uh, about. Nothing crazy? No big one? The first one? ten lines. The first ten lines of the patch are usually the most important. Mm -hmm. Honestly. Everybody just jumps to their favorite hero and like, yes, my hero got buffed, but the for me, the big things are always what stands in this in the beginning, like economy, the map, uh, that kind of stuff. So I really hope, I really hope. And just to, as a final thought here, because I, I was talking about this on my stream the other day, and people were like, oh, but the games are already long enough. Why do you want longer games? You can slow the game down without making the games longer. So th that might sound a little bit counterintuitive, but think of it this way. So if heroes, instead of getting decked out as fast as they are right now, get farmed slower and it doesn't ramp up by this like extreme pace, but then at the same time, it's easier to end the game or to push uh, or take towers, etc. then you could maintain a similar, maybe slightly longer average game time without being like, oh, now every game is an hour, whoop-de-doo, you know? I don't want that either. I don't want the average game time to be 60 minutes, but you could probably keep it in that 40-minute range with heroes getting items slightly slower, but then making, let's say, the base slightly easier to push. Um, so right now, you have heroes with five slots and a neutral item. If you remove the neutral item and you made the items appear slower, maybe you could make the base 20% weaker. And then in the end, it might balance itself out with average game time, if that makes sense. Um, so, Wow. Something like that. I know we disagree sometimes, but I disagree. What I would want is all of those things to not change. <laughs> Literally all of them? Literally. Well... No, the one thing you don't I want neutral items, do you? I I think they're fine now. I I okay. think I'm fine with them. I I wouldn't mind some That's terrain change, map changes, just to freshen mm -hmm. it up. But I, it's not like I dislike the current map at all. But yeah, I I would want all of those. I think having items on heroes makes the game more fun. And I think somebody was asking me on my stream about what I would want changed as like a general thing. And I couldn't mm -hmm. really think of anything, actually, which is crazy, like other than my, you know, my random ass thoughts about like mana bars and all that garbage. But because I feel especially like when a, on a competitive level, it feels like a lot of different types of strategies work. Like we've seen this early try landing. Mm -hmm. We've seen like in terms of laning stage, but even as an overall strat, it feels like most strats still work. And then the one that people say doesn't work as well is split pushing. But I feel like yeah. split pushing it works to a degree where you can try to extend the game and be annoying, but you can't, like, I shouldn't say you can't, but you usually won't be able to win a game because of it. And I'm fine with that. I think the ratting, like when it was winning games, even on a semi-consistent basis, was really, really annoying. And I hated that. So I actually think, like, in terms of the amount of strats you can do right now, I think it's at a really, really good place. The thing that I hope is... Like, the thing that I'm excited about is mostly just hero change. <laughs> the thing that he said that is the least important, 
I just want these heroes to get like, because right now there's obviously a tier of what hero is good and what's bad. And I just like the fluctuation to happen a little bit more often so that you're seeing some heroes a little bit more often that you don't see or just fluctuate. Right, rapid fire me basis. three heroes you want buffed. Necrophos, Pudge, of course. And well, Damn, are you going to get a third one good as well? LC. Oh, okay. If you said clockwork there, I would have been really impressed. Okay. Because clock and pudge are on my short list of three heroes I want <laughs> to be better. Okay. But the thing is, I don't necessarily just again, this goes in line with what I said before. I, I don't know why I'm the bigger boomer out of the two of us when you're older, but like it's true. I honestly my favorite, like let's say I really want clockwork and pudge to be better. I don't know how much I want them to be buffed. I would rather that other heroes that are more popular get nerfed. Again, to slow things down a bit more. Mm -hmm. um and maybe it could be a bit of both but i don't think we need like massive changes i think the hero balance itself right now is actually pretty good like you said it's not like there aren't like massive outliers with the exception of a couple of primarily supports honestly right now in pubs like spirit breaker and weaver are picked or banned basically every game in every bracket i think they're just mm -hmm. especially weaver is just crazy yeah. um but Aside from that, there aren't like many things that need to change. People are going to scream Tinker. They always do. I think it depends on... Uh, that hero success varies widely based on brackets. And it also... There's just certain heroes that will be stupid because they are the heroes that people playing on Smurfs with the specific purpose of ranking up will just be abusing because they're the best heroes when you're the best player in the server by far. Mm -hmm. Like Tinker. In the past, it's been Meepo, right? Meepo is just so garbage right now that people aren't actually playing it for the most part to to level up accounts or rank them up but hmm. there will be these heroes there will be brood all this stuff um is tinker too good probably by a bit but not like an outrageous amount i think at a competitive level especially like the hero is barely being picked in pro dota right which is really interesting that there always seems to be this dichotomy for some heroes in dota that they are a plague on pubs and then nobody plays them in pro that's really interesting mm -hmm. that we have it like that but yeah um small nerfs to tinker will be okay i think but you're you're likely killing him off in pro dota by doing that unless the economy and map changes start favoring him um but yeah, I, I like the heroes that you mentioned though. Necrophos would be nice to see some more again. I like that hero a lot. He's just vanished. Okay, um, so I have an actual so list of things. Uh and again, these are not like big changes. These are just individual heroes mostly. Number one, remodel Morphling. For fuck's sake, Valve. What true. the fuck, dude? And Marana. Yeah, okay. Well, Marana, I think that, that boat has sailed. Many dollars have been made, and they got away with it. Morphling... Oh, now they can remodel it. They made their money. <laughs> Morphling, please, God, I'm begging you. Uh, I would love a redesign, and I, I, this one's not... This is a wish list. It's not what I expect. Mm -hmm. Redesign of Legion Commander. We've talked about it many times. Would like the hero not to be revolved around press the attack. Would like it revolved around duel. Just mm -hmm. an aggressive hero. No press the attack, no save. Thank you. And she should have a horse. Yes. And, and a mustache. A mustache, a thick one. You can keep her as a female. Females sometimes have mustaches. That's fine. Uh, it's really the horse. And it has to be a really fat horse, too. It can't just be a regular fit horse. Mm -hmm. It needs to be, like, morbidly obese. Uh, in addition, okay. Marcy uh, added to CM just to see what that's like. Uh, that's probably going to happen. Shard and Ags added as well. And I was think I could not, this was hard because we thought of originally some ags and shards and they weren't really that good. Mm -hmm. What do you think, whether it's a shard or an ags, I don't know. Is this too OP to use rebound, which is her bouncing thing off of trees after buying a shard or an ags? No, I don't think so. Which one would it be appropriate for? 1400 gold or 4200 mm. or either is it just garbage it's definitely not garbage i think if it's a shard it's it's somewhere in between actually it might be too good for a shard but too bad for an ax so i don't really know what you do then right like maybe you make it the scepter and then also make the spell better somehow in addition to just letting you jump on trees okay um she... it's also possible that i'm totally underestimating how good that would be but 
I have to, she is <clears throat> exceptionally hard to come up with an Ags or a Shard for, and I think that makes it more likely that it's going to be, like, new skills. Uh, right. Just because a lot of the stuff, it's, okay, it's, it's one of two things. It's either going to be a new skill entirely for one of these, or both, or it's going to be a talent. A current talent will be transformed into an Ags or Shard, like the BKB on her W, whatever the hell that's called. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll see. So looking forward to that. Uh, Pudge... I'm not even looking for like any redesign. I think I don't know what the point of this was originally. Bring back the old hook speed, <clears throat> please. Like, why was it slowed down? And I'd like him to be less clunky. Uh, so turn rates, maybe being able to move when you hook. Like, it's just all these like little micro things that make the quality of life so much better to play. And if he's too good, just nerf the numbers. I don't care about the numbers really. It's just about making the hero not feel like shit <laughs> even though he's picked literally every game in pubs or ban i think i think pudge you th the thing i just said about tinker where we, you have these heroes that are like stupidly good in pubs and then not that good in pro dota i think pudge he doesn't fall into that category right but he also doesn't like carry games and just stomp but it's one of those heroes that has always historically in dota been one of the highest pick pro uh pick percentages in pub games because a lot of people find it really fun and then he is in that space where when he reached pro dota because he actually got really good he got nerfed like a month later mm -hmm. i had a lot of fun playing the good pudge you know the one that had the health region flesh heap for laning um which was very powerful and actually started being a core in some games it was played off lane it was played for um and then because it, because it was popular in Pro Dota and it was actually good, it was probably just, you know, considered broken in matchmaking. And then they nerfed it and it disappeared again out of Pro. I, I really want Pudge to be a Pro pick. I think there's a couple of things about that. Obviously, it's one of my personal favorites, so I'm biased. But I also think it's a really entertaining hero for the audience. I think it's a really... It's like a fan favorite pick. People always get excited when there's some Pudge in a Pro game. And I don't know how much of that is because it's a rarity and because of Dendi's legacy, and how much is because of, you know, the hero just genuinely being fun to watch. But I think it's really fun to watch a good Pudge player. I think um, that is not even a subjective thing. I think it just, it's not even about the the rarity of it. Obviously, that's part of it now since it's not picked, but it's just a fun hero. Like, techies, people really get fun. excited about, but it's a different, mm -hmm. that's that's more rarity, I feel. If that was picked every game, which it has been, people are like, oh, God, not another techies. Like... Yeah, mm -hmm. you have the the suicide or whatever it's called, blast off, but it's mostly a very defensive focused pick, which leads to boring games a lot of the time. Pudge, mm -hmm. that's not the case. So yeah, would love to see that. Uh, so in addition to that, I would like to see an Underlord redesign of some capacity. I'm on board with that. Uh, I know that your Ags that you suggested as the ult that would be an interesting change. They would have to buff it because I didn't realize the range was like not that high. I think the idea of the hero, the ult that is Dark Rift, like in theory, it sounds. I remember when the hero first came out in Dota. I'm like, this sounds mm. cool. Like there's so much possibility for it, but in actuality, it's it's just a TP most of the time. Like you're not, how many, can you think of how many times you've seen a cool clip where somebody TPs their whole team into some crazy scenario? Like it's very rare. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, it's just like a TP. Sometimes it's you'll get away. It's almost only used defensively. It, yeah. it, it has, it's very one dimensional. It feels like, which is ironic because it's called dark rift, but I just oh, think it would be cooler to have a different a different ult entirely, you know? And you can keep the ags as your version because that it's kind of the same. That's the thing that's weird. It's the ags and the ult are very similar, right? Mm -hmm. So just get rid of one of them, which for me would be Dark Rift, and replace it with something completely different. Make him a maybe a more aggressive hero. I, I think know, if you make the ags the Fiend's Gate, if you make that the ult and you redesign it in terms of numbers and everything, I think this hero will be a lot more popular because you get a true playmaking ability, right? Mm. And yeah, Dark Rift, like we talked about, it is theoretically a, a playmaking ability, but in pub games, coordinating this is a rarity, to say the least. And in Pro Dota, coordinating it is obviously a lot easier, but meeting the conditions where it makes a huge impact play apart from escaping is really difficult. So, um, 
yeah, I, I agree. I would like Fiendsgate to be the ult, and then you could come up with a different scepter. Um, it could even have something to do with Fiendsgate if you wanted to, not go too wild and creative, or it's just, I don't I don't, do you know what I mean when I say this hero in many ways has the most boring kit in the game? Yeah, he's boring as fuck. Like, it's literally, you place one AoE thing, you place another AoE thing on top of it, and then you can right-click. And that's it. Like, there's nothing else there. You don't scale particularly well compared to, like, you can't play it like a carry. So usually people play it as an aura bot, which also isn't that inspiring. It's not, you know... See, that's the thing. It, like, his old There's very few creative builds and space for exploration on this hero. It's very yeah. pigeonholed, basically, as a design. So that's why I was surprised they got rid of his original Ags because I know in pro play you're not going to do it, but in pubs you would see carry Underlord sometimes because it actually was mm -hmm. sometimes viable with like an AC Ags or whatever, Mjolnir. Like, you could some get cool creative builds. with that item. Yeah. Now it's just boring. It's even more boring than before. So hoping for him to be just different in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I also would, this one I haven't given out too much thought. I just nullifier. Okay, it's one of two things. <laughs> Either nullifier needs to have a slight tweak. Or necro better or worse? necro ghost uh, worse necro ghost shroud needs to be like not dispellable, but that's going to be OP. Basically, playing necro, <laughs> uh, the necro buff that I would want is that nullifier doesn't delete the hero. That's what I would want. I don't know how you accomplish mm -hmm. that. Like buying a BKB isn't really like that. That's game losing. It feels like. And you have to activate it in time, where if you're blinking it with a melee hero, getting an Abyssal Blade, whatever. The, like, it literally deletes the hero. So I don't know what change you need to make, but that's what I would appreciate. So in the time frame between when Diffusal purged and when Nullifier became an item, there was a time in between that, right? It wasn't... Like, when Diffusal stopped yes. purging... Well, Diffusal stopped and purging. And became a slow. That was not when Nullifier came out, right? No, well, there was a time in between, or was it the same patch? No, it definitely was not the same patch. And Nullifier used to mute items and did not dispel. That's true. So, so there was a time that there was no offensive purge in the game? As, a, as an item? Yeah. Right. Because it used to always be Diffusal, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure how to go about it, because... Having no offensive purge itemization option mm. is probably a problem yeah. in general. Um, which neutral items have an offensive purge? Which bane? Yules, people are saying in chat, that's true. Yules can technically take it off. Yeah, Yules has always been a thing, uh, but I'm not going to count that as an offensive purge because it's not the same thing, right? Like, you, you do dispel, but you also make the target invulnerable, so you can't just, like... Okay, guys, I'm using Necro, kill him, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what Nullify literally does. You just, I press button, go hit him, and he can't defend himself. Right. Um, yeah. I don't know. I feel the same way. I, I feel like, you know, there's, but again, it might be a symptom, or this might be happening because of how fast heroes get gold. Like, I know I keep coming back to this, but if you think about it, I think part of Necrophos weakness is that when other heroes ramp up this fast, his moment of opportunity is really small, right? Because like you point out, people will just farm an Olifier on their carry really fast, or uh, maybe, you know, in some cases they will find Witchbane, but that's minute 37, so maybe that's okay. But um, it's just, I think the itemization options make Necro's life really, really tough a lot of the time. Um, and he also, obviously, as always, he will suffer from slow movement speed and the inability to navigate fights very well. And that's just the hero's identity, so I don't think you should change that. Um, but yeah, the itemization options definitely make his life hard a lot of the time. Is there a reason... I know it's very expensive. I was thinking maybe a nerf. This would be quite the nerf, but eh, actually it depends. What if Nullifier dispelled initially but doesn't continually dispel but it still slows each time you attack you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah like would that be like does it affect anything more than necro <laughs> like the fact that you can't like okay i i apply nullifier to you during ghost shroud it cancels okay i four step mm -hmm. oh wait i can't uh i, I literally can't i can't you i can't literally not do anything if i have eon this mm -hmm. continually like there's nothing i can do you know, like if four I step if wasn't Nullifier... a thing, if that didn't dispel right. four step, then maybe this is okay. But yeah, I I 
I'm wondering if making four stuff undispellable again would actually be a bad thing for the game. I don't know, because what was the case in that? There was a time frame when four stuff was really, really popular. It, I mean, it still is popular, but not to the extent it was back then. Um, there was like four staffs in basically every game, maybe two or three uh, on one team even when it was a good game for it. And then Nullifier's Purge came out and people started specifically buying Nullifier to counter four staffs when they would go on targets so they couldn't get away. Um, like you said, if that wasn't the case, then Necrophos could defend himself whenever he goes shrouds and gets purged. He could four staff away and reposition at least, but now you're just stuck and you can't move. Can't re buying BKB feels really bad as well because it doesn't synergize with your second spell. Then you can't, you know, do those together. Um, if Nullifier only purged on use and not continuously, it would affect a lot of spells, not just Ghost Shroud. Like, there's tons of things you would usually want to purge, right? It would affect you can use in the Eon afterwards. Disc interaction as well because you'd Eon have to wait well. for Eon Disc to proc first to be able to yeah. use Nullifier. And I think that would be fine, honestly. I don't mind. Um... I think if, okay, if Nullifier just targeted on use and didn't have the five second linger, I think you could just buff the item in other ways, like make it cheaper or make the other stats better, something like that. And then instead of continuous dispel, it is on use. I actually really like that. I like the sound of that a lot. I think that's cooler. And then, yeah, you can make the item a little bit cheaper, um, perhaps. Because then, then it suddenly becomes, it becomes this skill thing between the players about you know, baiting out the nullifier or outlasting it or something so you can get to use your defensive abilities rather than one player being able to be like, haha, fuck you for five seconds, you can't play, you know? Mm -hmm. um, okay, well, I Shrug, if you're watching, oops. I had one good idea. Please implement it. I appreciate that. And then my last idea that is also good, and it wouldn't really be a big <laughs> patch without uh, this, is please change OD's name again. Mm. I think it just it's becoming a tradition that once per year we do need a an OD name change. Give and me a good OD name. If you're gonna uh let's see, out horse How about old old dirty. <laughs> yeah, old dirty's pretty good. Uh if while you're changing his name, maybe you know, hit the delete key on Astral Imprisonment as a spell, as well as the shard, because it's an abomination and I can't stand playing against it personally. Uh, wouldn't mind that being deleted, honestly. So, okay, that's the wish list. On to non dota related stuff. Portal, Portal news, Cinderin. Valve oh, has again. announced that Portal and Portal 2 are coming to Nintendo Switch in the Portal Companion Collection. It's $20 on the Nintendo eShop. What? <laughs> wow, that's the first Valve product ever on a different system than wait what systems have valve had games on apart from pc uh they've had counter-strike on console old ones i think i'm pretty sure Counter Strike on console like 1.6 or was it source maybe i feel like well, what I was that on i don't know playstation i don't know. i have no idea Orange Box came out on consoles, apparently. Sequel was chat. on Xbox, and Orange Box is on PlayStation. All right, okay. I, I'm just ignorant here. So I thought this was actually this, a really new thing that Valve had something that wasn't on PC. So there's a okay. couple things to talk about and unpack here. Number one, obviously, mm -hmm. Steam Deck is coming up like in a week or something, like very shortly. So what's the yeah. benefit of doing this? Number two, this comes about three months, I want to say, after this commercial that we played on the podcast, which was Portal mm -hmm. on... Uh, is a Geico commercial on Twitch. Is that related at all? Or is that just a coincidence? Maybe one person at Valve is just really working on Portal and they are doing marketing and they're the only person in Valve doing marketing. And they reached out to they reached out to Geico. Geico's like, yeah, that sounds fun. They reached out to Nintendo and Nintendo were like, wow, a partnership with Valve. Is this is this really happening? Sure, let's do it. But that's the one person that does it. Right. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think it's a coincidence, right? Those two things happening this close to each other. Uh, but the Geico thing, we both agreed we thought was definitely on Geico's initiative, right? Like they I don't wanted know to anymore. use the IP I don't for know anymore. App, maybe that inspired Nintendo to reach out and be like, hey, guys, if you're actually working with other so people. Do I don't have any inside information on this at all. But I am very positive about what I'm going to say. 
I am very sure, and I've convinced myself today that this is 100% a thing. They are working on Portal 3. So the reason I think that is the reason you bring it, all this stuff out on Nintendo's, a 10-year-old, a however old Portal is, Portal 1 is more than 10 years old. The reason you bring it out on Switch is because that's going to be your biggest competition with Steam Deck. And when you come out with Portal 3, it won't be on Switch. So if people want, if they like Portal and Portal 2 on original Switch, they will have to buy a Steam Deck. Damn, you sly dog. To play Portal 3. And I know there's been tons of rumors that there's a bunch of games. Actually, it's not even a rumor. Gaben himself has said this. Valve are working on several games right now. And I 100% believe that Portal 3 is one of them. There's no way you can convince me not. The, everything aligns because we know Valve, they will not do any marketing. So if they're doing you know marketing, really they're up hyped? to something. Which is this. What's that? If they released Half-Life 2 on the Switch. Then that means Half-Life 3 is coming out? <laughs> that, is, that would be your expectation then. Uh, let me think. An FPS game on a Switch. I guess Nintendo. I was gonna say it's it's a little violent for for Nintendo, but they've actually had FPS games on there before. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, the fact that that's not happening means Half Life Three is not being worked. <laughs> Definitively, you heard it here first. But yeah, that's. I mean, Portal is such a unique concept. It's such a cool game. I mean, it's very suitable for the Switch. That's another thing. Like, just when it comes to the gameplay of this game, yeah, it's out at of your any own Valve pace. title, I think this is the most compatible with Switch. Yeah. I think it's going to play really nicely. Uh, it's one of the things that Switch really primes itself on is, uh, you know, plug and play and easy multiplayer. And that's perfect for Portal as well, right? Um, yeah. You know what system is the worst possible one you could put Portal on, Cinderin? Can you guess it? The Steam Deck. The Valve Index. Oh, yeah. That's probably... Uh, I don't know. Do you want to have a yeah, VR I mean, headset a on while you're standing up playing Portal? Seriously? I think it's an easy way to get nausea. You're going to get disoriented AF. So... It sounds crazy, actually. Yeah, that's probably true. Which, yeah. Anyway, I am convinced that Portal cool, 3 though. is being worked on and looking forward to it when it comes out in 10 years. Maybe I'll actually grab this for the Switch. I don't think I own Portal. Do I? You could have gotten a Steam Deck. Yeah, I actually don't have Portal. And I think I've played it at some point, but I don't think I've played the full games. I just remember my roommate having it many years ago or something, and I played it at least somewhat. But I don't know if I finished Portal 1. Anyway, it's a good game. So Yes. Cool. Highly recommend it. All right, and last topic of the week is the 2022 Oscar nominations. You know I love talking about the Oscars, despite it making me so angry over the years, Cinderin. And I know mm -hmm. that this is basically like talking about the NBA because you watch half of a series on average per year and not even one movie probably generous so have Let's you looked any of this i've watched yeah i was gonna say even i have not watched a lot of these uh okay so best picture the power of the dog which i didn't want to see because it looks terrible don't look up which i did recommend that's why i did see that uh coda never heard of it dune great that was the best movie I've seen in the last couple of years. Belfast, no idea. West Side Story, Licorice Pizza, King Richard, which is the story about Serena and Venus Williams' father and the whole family, I guess, with Will Smith playing the part. That's for best picture. Nightmare Alley and Drive My Car. So out of these, I have heard of three, four movies, and I've seen two. Okay. I have heard of... You've heard of Dune. Two. Wait, what's the and second I've watched one? one? What's the second one? I think Dune. What's <laughs> I've watched Don't Look Up. Oh, that's right. Did you see Dune? And no, I haven't seen it. Wow. And I really should, right? Yeah. It's very good. I, I recommend it. 
I, I think I heard. Um, I, I'll just say out of this list, without having seen the other movies, I don't think Don't Look Up deserves to win. I'll just say that. I think it's very unlikely in a field of movies that that it's, will be the best. It's not going to win. Yeah. It was it was good. It was fun, but it wasn't like anything spectacular, and it was too drawn out. The movie should have been half an hour shorter. It would still have got to the point and made the same jokes. It got a little bit repetitive at times. Um, but some of the acting in it, I think, was very good. Um, so perhaps it can win some subcategories, but I don't think it should win Best Picture unless these other movies so, are okay, good. We can do our prediction. What, what movie do you think is going to win Best Picture? Uh, based on what I've heard and just overall public reception, probably Dune. But there's no way th- that would be my guess. There's no way. But again, I would I'm love, very ignorant okay. in this field. So. I would love. First of all, I agree. Don't look up is not going to win Best Picture. I don't think it should either. Dune, in my very humble opinion, should win, but it will not. The movie that will win is the one that looks most like, based on the previews, because I haven't seen it. Looks like mm-hmm. these shitty. I'm going to offend a lot of people that like Coen Brothers movies. It looks like a shitty Coen Brother like. No Country for Old Men type boring ass movie that I just want to like fucking die during, which is Power of the Dog. Looks miserable. Everything about that trailer looked fucking miserable. So that's going to win Best Picture, is my guess. Okay. Um, we don't. I need... hope. Uh, I hope Licorice Pizza wins just for the name. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're not going to go through. I don't care. Let's just <laughs> talk about Best Actor and Best Actress, and then we'll call it a day. All right. So first of all, okay. let's do Best Actress first because there's one name missing here. I watched. Uh, what's it called? House of Gucci. Mm -hmm. The movie was, it was good. I wouldn't say it was amazing or anything, but very rarely, (coughs) excuse me, very rarely do I come out of a movie and I'm like, holy shit, that person, guy or woman, acted the shit out of that. Like, they're just really good. And a lot of times when I do that, they win the Oscar. I've done that with Emma, Emma Stone. I've done that with Natalie Portman. Like, there's a couple others. Anyway, the person that I thought should have been nominated, and she's actually won a bunch of awards already for the movie, but was conspicuously left out, is Lady Gaga. She is an amazing actor. Holy shit. And, like, there's a couple songs. I don't really follow her at all. I Like... There's a couple songs that I like from her, but I don't really keep up with this kind of stuff. You know me being a boomer. Holy mm-hmm. shit. She 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 acted in uh what was the other movie she was in? The the one with Bradley. Oh, that one. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name. That this the one I did the long haul song on. Dude, a Star is Born. Thank you, Chet. She so she's really good at acting. I'm very surprised and very impressed that somebody can be so good <laughs> at multiple things like that that's insane wow. i saw your tweet and i actually thought it was sarcastic no no i thought was... you weren't being serious and you were like man she's just shoehorned in because you know she's famous for her music and they just no she gave her a role because so, it will drive your shit. here's the so. thing about that movie because somebody tweeted back at me saying that her accent was not good in the movie it's like an italian thing right mm-hmm. so i can't speak uh, this person i was saying that is like an actual italian so obviously i can't like right. if somebody did an iranian accent i'd be able to easily tell if it's fake or not or not real so i mm-hmm. can't speak for that but the acting other than that incredible and plus on top of that some of the accents in the movie including al pacino did a real shit job and the guy they had as the main uh, the main character's dad had a British accent the whole time, despite trying to be Italian. Just fucking embarrassing, actually. So sounds relatable. <laughs> yeah. So best actor Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch for the Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield, Tick Tick Boom, Will Smith somehow for King Richard, Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and Javier Bardem for Being the Ricardos. Uh, I haven't seen any of these movies, so I'm gonna say. Mm. I'm gonna say Benedict I think you're Cumberbatch. Gonna predict the winner. <laughs> I'm gonna say Benedict Benedict Cumberbatch because I do like him. He's a good okay. actor, and that movie is gonna be considered very good and artsy and terrible, whatever. Okay, Will Smith. I'll pick oh, uh, Denzel fuck? Washington. Great. <laughs> All right, best actor. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this dude <laughs> hey it gives you a chance to be right about something <laughs> yeah it is true i probably have better odds here even though it's a one in five yeah uh so. best actress is the last one we'll do i promise <laughs> olivia <laughs> coleman for the lost daughter that was on netflix wasn't it uh nicole kidman being the ricardos 
Penelope Cruz, Parallel Mothers, Kristen Stewart for Spencer's. So that's the chick from it's a terrible vampire movie. Kristen Stewart. Oh my god, what is the name of that absolute dog shit vampire series? And then Jessica Chastain for the Eyes of Tammy Faye. Twilight. Yes, Twilight. Wait, is she the main actress in Twilight? Yes. Oh, she is. Okay. So That's she from 2008. I'm so old. She is nominated for Best Actress and Will Smith for Best Act. I don't know what timeline we're in right now. Uh I'm <laughs> I'm just gonna guess it's Nicole Kidman. Okay, so what's your guess? Um Think long and hard I'll, about this. I'll pick I'll pick Kristen Stewart. Okay. I really liked her in Twilight. Okay, great. Yeah. So we'll see if I end up watching the Oscars this year. It's usually terrible. But Anthony Hopkins did win last year, and I was very happy for him because that was a god-tier performance. Is there a new category, or is it the same categories as last time? Uh, oh, I should. Okay, I, need, I do need to mention one more thing. So let me find the best original song. I'm not going to name all the mm. movies. So we watched Encanto recently. Movie was okay, but the song... Don't Talk About Bruno is so fucking... It's an S-tier song. If you guys haven't heard it, look up Don't Talk About Bruno. I think that's the, the actual name. But is that the one that's nominated? No. So I okay. talked to Nikki about this because she is... You know, she used to work in uh, as a talent, whatever they're called, talent agent in Hollywood. <clears throat> when So ahead of time, there's a deadline that you need to submit all your stuff that you want to be potentially nominated for the Oscars. And you can okay. only pick one thing. And this was before the movie came out, which this whole system sounds fucking stupid as fuck. And they, they submitted a song that is not even good. In my opinion, it, it's like mm -hmm. one of the worst songs in the movie. And they didn't select the Bruno song, which is breaking records, by the way, it is super popular. So most of you probably heard it. So that makes me really sad. That's not even nominated. It would have, Easily won. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's going to be something else probably. All right. Dude, there's so many categories. Yeah, it's it's a long, it's a long uh, award ceremony. So. Okay. All, All right. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the episode. We had no topics. We thought that in terms of just the content itself, it should last about 20 minutes. That are, was your your words, not mine. We are now... I would have guessed 45 to 50. We are now an hour and seven minutes. That's that's a great podcast length. Good job, Shannon. We did it. Well done, everybody. Give a shout out to um, anyone in particular? Uh, shout out to Will Smith. Our patrons. Thank you guys so much for being a patron. Shout out Patreon. to Will Smith. Patreon.com slash we say things. Patreon.com slash Will Smith. Will Smith. Thank you. If you win an Oscar, I don't even know, man. I know you watch this podcast. You're a big, we, you're a big Dota fan. <laughs> I'm going to watch King Richard. And if, if I feel like it was actually a good performance, I will come on the podcast and say something. But my I God. I thought you were going to put in Will Smith's face in one of the sponsor boxes for a whole episode. He'll How be on that? the thumbnail. Okay. Until next time, okay. Suns fan and Cinder signing out. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. We say things that don't mean anything. But thanks for listening. Yeah.